Hey everybody, let's get into another Pioneer League. This time we're playing something a bit different and interesting. This is a take on a lantern control style artifact based control deck in the Pioneer format. Mostly centered around gear per ether grid as a way to both close out the game and remove creatures from our opponent's board. There's also some backup removal in case our opponents have large creatures or, if we, or we don't have grid yet. We have two Bantus Last Reckoning, two Battle at the Bridge, three Glass Caskets, two Portable Holes, and one Pacification Array that we can tap things down with, including other artifacts, and we can also tutor for with our Inventor's Fair. Another interesting interaction in the deck is we can use Inventor's Fair to tutor, to tutor for Crucible of Worlds, and then use Crucible of Worlds to get back Inventor's Fair and have a recursive engine that should help us win the game. We have one Mastermind's Acquisition that can help us tutor for something in our deck or in the sideboard. And speaking of the sideboard, we splash into two additional colors just because it's fairly easy for us to because of Spire of Industries and Prophetic Prisms. So we have one green card and Assassin's Trophy, and we have a handful of blue cards with Unmored Ego, Kyranos, and Padim. And hopefully we are able to make some Phoenix players very, very sad today. Let's get into the first match. While we're waiting on the... oh, there we go, awesome. That was less time than I thought it would be. This is actually a deck that I've been, like, slowly brewing, and I had been playing it in paper when paper Pioneer tournaments were happening pre-COVID, when it was still a meta based on three or four combo decks. Because this deck was just weird enough that it was able to deal with some of them pretty well. Let's see, we got two lands. We don't have a grid, but we do have our mana fixing. We have two lands, we have a way to cantrip, and we have a bunch of removal spells. We're playing against the Luris deck. So I think that this hand would be good. Looks like it's burn. It's good that we have Fountain of Renewal in our opening hand then. Yep. Alright, let's start off Spire of Industry, Fountain of Renewal. One other thing with this deck, it is it, it requires a lot of clicks to close out the game with a gear per ether grid, especially if your opponent starts gaining life, so you need to try to play very tightly and not pause the game any more than you have to. It's usually good to think about what you're going to be doing the next turn even more so than you would in a normal game. I think next turn I'm just going to go Pacification Array, Portable Hole, get rid of one of the Monastery Swift Spears, and I'll leave Glass Casket in my hand for now so maybe I can get Luris with it later. But I might just wind up getting another one of these. But Pacification Array essentially removes one more creature that they have once we start being able to leave up mana for it. And then we can just hopefully passively gain life for a while with Fountain of Renewal and undo our opponent's burn spells. An idle on. We'll probably glass casket that then. We take one damage, we gain that life back. So it's essentially a zero sum turn. We're gonna take one to Spire of Industry here and then two to the idle on so we can get rid of it. If I had another removal spell, there'd be an argument for leaving idle on and letting our opponent burn themselves with it. I don't think it's worth it at this moment. Let's play out Soul Guide Lantern. It's good against Luris, but since we've been exiling all their threats instead of killing them, it doesn't really matter that much at this point. I might just wind up cantripping it soon. Our 
opponent must have a lot of burn in their hand because they've been stuck on two lands for a while. Maybe I should have left Eidolon in play to see if I can get them to burn themselves a bit. Oh well. Hopefully we get a land here. It's not necessarily the land I wanted. But it is a land. So what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna set a stop on their combat. So I can essentially remove Monastery Swift Spear here. And then I can start gaining life. What do they have? Lava Runner, okay. Burn spell. Maybe. Boris Charm. Does that kill us? I think it does, because we can't gain one life. We can only stop two. Wait, we can stop that. Okay. So we take away Lava Runner's haste with Soul Guide on the turn. And we tap down Swift Spear. Three, battle at the bridge, excellent. All right, so we're gonna get rid of Lava Runner. I'm gonna leave up mana to stop Swift Spear from attacking and kill Lava Runner and gain four. I think that sounds good. Now we're at seven again. Our opponent's got one card in their hand, the Swift Spear doesn't matter currently. Soulscar Mage, okay. It's not attacking this turn at least. I think next turn we're gonna leave up two mana for Pacification Array and play Golden Egg so we can maybe gain three life. See if we draw anything good. Spire of Industry. Pithing Needle I don't think does anything main deck against them. But I'm going to play it on Roiling Vortex just in case. We know that, the, that they don't have Chandra's in their deck because of, uh... Actually. Is it worth getting Ramanap Ruins? They've been stuck on land, so I'm going to get Roiling Vortex. I've seen that in main deck, I think maybe once or twice. But it's good enough against us that we should get rid of it now. The main reason that we just played that out was so that we don't take two to possibly them playing an Eidolon or something later. And we can go ahead and get it on board for future Battle at the Bridges if we are lucky enough to draw another one. Or maybe Gear per Ether Grid whenever we draw that. And also it's good to keep an eye on the clock when you're playing this deck. Ah, damn it, I forgot to stop their attack. Hopefully that doesn't bite us. We're just going to gain three life with Golden Egg and pretend like it was on purpose. Luckily we didn't just die to a shock there, that would have been very sad. They have a light up the stage, what do they get with it? They got another light up the stage and a sacred foundry. They're pretty close to out of steam, but they do have a creature that can keep hitting us. Play another light up the stage, I assume. Githu Lava Runner and Monastery Swift Spear. Both pretty scary. Hmm. So let's get rid of Soul Scar Mage. I 
we can tap down a creature, which is going to be the Lava Runner most likely, since we know that it's going to have two power, and then take two. And then we still need to draw something to help us get out of this. But if they get a burn spell too, we're just dead. So let's see. Unfortunately, we didn't draw Orbs of Warding this game. That would have helped us a lot. Yep. One card in hand. Is it a burn spell? We will see. Doesn't look like it. Alright, we're at three. Gain life, draw battle at the bridge. Okay. Let's leave up two for pacification array. Hopefully they don't have removal. Because if they put their if they point their removal downstairs at their own creature, that'd be sad. In case they have a shock in their hand. I don't know why they wouldn't have killed us, but. I'm gonna pick Swift Spear here, so that if they shock it, it goes up to three, and we still get to gain the life. Alright, that was a very lucky draw for us. Alright, and we're gonna remember to use the pacification array now. <laughs> Very important. Scrabbling Claws, Prophetic Prism. Let's play Prophetic Prism, hopefully draw something good. Scrabbling Claws will be able to keep them off of getting things back from Luris, hopefully. Sequestered Stash. Okay. We don't have the mana to activate that this turn but we might soon to get back Golden Egg, maybe. Just gonna go ahead and have them exile a card from their graveyard. I feel like they're gonna be getting... Oh! I don't know why they didn't put Lurus in their hand last turn. Maybe they just forgot about it. Soulscar Mage, okay. Lock down Lava Runner. Okay. I feel like I need to draw a card that's actually action instead of just having Scrabbling Claws sit out. So I'm gonna exile their Githu Lava Runner from their graveyard to draw a card. Okay. That's a couple of good cards. So Collective Brutality... Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have the mana to play Mastermind's Acquisition and then also tap something down with Pacification Array. That might be worth it. Collective Brutality to kill something might also be worth it too. I think I'm just going to kill a creature now with Brutality and not gain the life from it. And then tap something down with Pacification Array. Because I don't want to force myself to use Acquisition on something yet before I know exactly what I want. And I think if I draw an untapped land here, my line is going to be... Uh, acquisition, get a card from my Acquisition, get a card from my uh, deck, play uh, Gear Per Aether Grid and kill Luris is most likely the line. There's Luris. 
He has one card left in his hand. He doesn't play a land, so he's not getting back Lava Runner here. But I would like Luris to be out of the way. I take one, stay at 11 over the course of this turn. Yep. Yep. Gain life. Beautiful draw. So, black, colorless. Change it to a black so they don't have to take an extra damage. And colorless, Bantu's Last Reckoning. We should be home free from here now. We do have a turn that we don't get to untap, but we just got rid of so many things that I doubt that our opponent's going to be able to like burn us out from here. Okay, we take two. He has a 2-1. And we still have enough mana that if we draw gear per ether grid, we can play it this turn. We take two, gain one, go up to ten. We drew Craft Digger's Cage. I'll go ahead and play it. It matters a lot less now that Luris is gone, but whatever. And we can tap down their 2-1, so it can't hit us. Okay. Gain one, we drew gear per ether grid. That's excellent. One. It's still a burn deck, so I don't want to take any more damage than I have to, so I'm gonna filter ether grid. We're just going to try to kill uh, Soulscar Mage here and hope that he doesn't have a way to prowess it up. Awesome. And then we still have Pacification Array and one Gear per Ether Grid activation up, depending on which one we need. And we can also start dealing four to our opponent every turn until they die. Okay, cool. Beautiful. Alright, that was a pretty good game one. Let's see what we want for game two. We want another Battle at the Bridge for sure. We want another Fountain of Renewal. Let's see. Kaya is also pretty good against Burn, so I think I'll bring that in. I might bring in Padim. I might bring in Herald of Anguish. Let's see what I want to take out. The Crystal of Worlds plan isn't as good against Burn because you don't usually have that much time, but I think I'll leave it in anyway. Pithing Needle is not that good against them. So I think I'm going to cut a Sorcerer's Spyglass, cut a cut one Needle, maybe I cut Thoughtseize? Thoughtseize is really hit or miss against burn decks usually, so I'm not really sure. I'm definitely leaving in at least one Needle because I'm pretty sure that he's going to have a Roiling Vortex effect after he saw how much life we gained last game. Yeah, I think I cut both the Thought Seizes, and then I add in either Herald of Anguish or Padim. Which one do I like better here? This can give my things Hexproof and is a 1-4. This is a 5-5, five, five, so it's also a stonewall blocker and it gets cards out of their hand. Maybe I like... Oh, I want Craft Digger's Cage in, I know that. Because they're playing a Luris deck, so I want the extra cage. Maybe that's all I do. Want Fountains. Pretty much never side out the uh, Codex Shredder. I'll keep in the Crucible, keep these. Yeah, I'll just try it like this, I think. So we added one Battle at the Bridge, one Fountain of Renewal, one Graft Digger's Cage, and one Kaya. And that way we also sighted out two artifacts and sighted in two artifacts, so we didn't lose on our Aether Grid count at all. This hand seems pretty good. Uh, it's lacking a two mana play, but the line might be like turn one, Soul Guide Lantern, two, turn two, just play a small Battle at the Bridge, and then turn three, play Gear Per Aether Grid. So we'll keep. I would like to draw like a uh, one of the two mana artifacts that draw us a card. That is definitely not one of those. Let's just play Spire of Industry, Soul Guide Lantern, and pass. We 
We don't need a, become, a begin combat step. Stop yet. Yeah, there's the Roiling Vortex. We knew that was coming. They don't have a very fast clock on us yet, so that's good at least. There's another battle at the bridge. So that's good too. I'm gonna play Darksteel Citadel. And I'll wait to see what side I play the pathway on, depending on what I need next turn. This deck needs a little bit more black mana than anything else, but like right now I'm tempted to play it on red just so I don't take the damage to playing Ether Good. That's fine. Is he gonna tap out? He is gonna tap out. Okay, never mind. I'm playing Battle of the Bridge this coming turn. So I have two Battle at the Bridges. So what that means for me is I'm going to play Pathway on the black side. I'm going to Battle at the Bridge, his Soul Scar Mage. Because we don't take damage to Eidolon from this and we get to gain life. And he's just going to start taking a bunch of damage to his Eidolon here. Between Eidolon and Roiling Vortex, he's actually damaging himself a lot. does not tap out again. That's smart. So what we're gonna do... Play Ether Hub. Because Ether Grid can come down and immediately remove Pyromancer, it's actually life neutral. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play that. Spinning the energy for a red. Yep. That's fine. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this now. Because next turn it's possible he gets like a discounted uh, Wizard's Lightning off of it. Yep, there's Wizard's Lightning right now, actually. We're at 11, he's at 9. If he taps out again, we can battle at the bridge something for about a million. And we can also start pinging our opponent directly if we need to. Opponent's at 6. Let's see. We, if we battle at the bridge, Soulscar Mage, we don't take any to Eidolon. He's going to prevent the life gain, but he's going to have to pay a life to do that. And then he's at four. And then I think he just can't close out the game in time. So I think that's what the plan is. I'm going to Battle at the Bridge, Soulscar Mage, using only actual mana. Leave up one gear per ether grid activation so I can ping our opponent. And I think that should close out the game, most likely. Between Eidolon and Roiling Vortex, I think he kills himself. Okay. Okay. Wow. He's taking so much damage. So he can't cast spell- he's just dead. He's at two. He can't cast a burn spell in his upkeep to kill us. So I think he just- yeah, he has to just die. Alright. Well, that was against burn. You saw how this deck works against a- very aggressive deck. Hopefully we'll get to keep seeing some success like that.